the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, Distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Eugenie Anderson, United States Ambassador to Denmark. In this discussion, the opinions are necessarily those of the speakers. Mrs. Anderson, our audience knows you as the first woman ambassador, the first American woman ambassador to any nation, and as our present ambassador to Denmark. I believe that you're back home after two years in Denmark, aren't you? Yes, this is my first visit home. Well, we'd like to hear something about the people of Denmark. Now, uh, we're hearing a great deal about war. Is there a lot of war talk in Denmark? Oh, I think there's a great desire for peace in Denmark, just as there is in most of the Western European countries. Is there a certain amount of defeatism and cynicism there? Do the people expect uh, another invasion? Well, I think there are some people today who are still defeatist, but really there is much less defeatism today in Denmark or any place in Western Europe than when I first came there two years ago. Now, Denmark belongs to the North Atlantic Alliance, does it not? Yes, Denmark is a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Uh, what is Denmark's contribution to this organization, or is she on the receiving end mostly? Oh, no, indeed. Denmark uh, realizes today that it also is contributing and wants to contribute to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Men? Uh, yes, indeed. Men, troops, and of course the Greenland Agreement, I think that that is part of Denmark's basic contribution to the North Atlantic Treaty, because under that agreement, Denmark will contribute to, will work with the United States to establish bases, air bases and other facilities in Greenland, and that's very important to the defense of the North Atlantic Treaty. They don't, uh, they don't object to our being in Greenland. There's no resentment of our taking over bases there, is there? Oh, no. <coughs> Denmark is retaining its sovereignty over the island of Greenland, and Denmark is working with the United States to establish these bases and maintain them. Is Greenland a profitable... Uh Enterprise for Denmark? Is there taxes collected? Uh, oh, no, I think the Danes have put more into Greenland than they have ever taken out of it. Merely a strategic base. It's very important uh, from a strategic point of view, and uh, it's Denmark's last colony. It's, it's yeah. very important to Denmark from a traditional point of view. Right. Yes. The uh, Danes understand that uh, it's important in possible atomic warfare, do they not? Uh, they understand, of course, that Greenland is very important to the defense of the whole area, the North Atlantic area. I, uh, getting back to Denmark itself, are the communists strong in Denmark now? No, I wouldn't say so. They still have uh, seven seats in the parliament out of 151, but they had 18 seats right after the war, so that they have decreased every year, and they're not a political force today. Are they in the trade unions? A few, but not essentially. <coughs> the trade unions are essentially anti-communist and very strongly pro-democratic. Now, uh, Mrs. Anderson, you're aware, of course, that uh, there has been a great deal of criticism in America of the North Atlantic Alliance and of our general effort uh, in Europe. Now, uh, do you feel that we are spending too much money in Europe now? No, indeed. I think that what we're spending is very well spent for our own defense, as well as for the defense of Western Europe. You are a strong defender of the whole spending plan, then, in Europe. I think that the North Atlantic Treaty is the best means that we have for preventing aggression, for deterring war. And I think that it's absolutely necessary to build up the defenses of our allies, as well as ourselves. Are you... Uh uh, told me that you were of Scotch-English ancestry. You come from the Mississippi Valley region of the United States where 
people uh, I hear learn to be frugal. Uh, do you think the United States, uh, do you personally believe, the United States can continue to spend this kind of money? Oh, of course. I think that we have to be sure that our money is being well spent, and I think that we have to be sure that our programs are working out. But I think that today that we have assurances that they really are. And I believe that we have no choice but to build up our defenses and to help our allies to restore their defense forces. You've seen General Eisenhower lately, have you? Yes, he's been in Copenhagen several times. Do you approve of his job? I think he's doing a magnificent job. I think he's inspired the people of Western Europe and given them a new feeling of confidence and hope. Do you feel that he perhaps might be expendable for other jobs like perhaps the presidency? Well, I couldn't say. I, I could just say this. I think up to now that he has been indispensable in Europe. That may come back to some of the criticism in our own country. Uh, now, you say that uh, the Danes are making a contribution, that the Danes are prepared to fight for yes, their freedom. Yes, indeed they are. Now, uh, how do they feel about the rearmament of Germany? I think the Danes uh, support the rearmament of Germany, particularly as long as it's going to be within the framework of a democratic uh, North Atlantic Treaty arrangement or a democratic Europe. The yeah. Danes, they, they understand that Denmark cannot be defended unless Germany is defended. That's very not. important. The Danes realize that the farther east the defense could be made, that the better it would be for Denmark. Well, now many Americans, uh, Mrs. Anderson, feel that until we rearm Germany, that all of our other rearmament efforts are more or less unrealistic. Now, uh, do you feel that the rearmament of Germany is the real crux of the matter, that we must rearm Germany, and until then, uh, the rest of it really doesn't make much difference? Oh, no, indeed, I wouldn't say that. I think that the defense of Europe, I think that uh, Germany is vital to the defense of Europe, and I think that we must rearm Germany, but I feel that the problem is so immense that it's very important that we get ahead with the other countries and uh, move along with the whole problem as rapidly as we can. Denmark has a lot to gain economically if we rearm Germany, hasn't she? Well, naturally, the more that German health is restored economically and otherwise, the, the better off Denmark and all the European countries will be. Is, is the feeling in Denmark predicated uh, along ideological or uh, practical lines? In oh, the I, I think both. I mean, the, the Danes realize that Germany, a democratic Germany, is essential to the defense of Western Europe. And at the same time, the Danes are good traders. They live by trade, and they have to have uh, their trade restored with Germany, too. To come back to whether we're getting our dollars worth or not, how much are the Danes spending now in their defense effort? Uh, do you mean in terms of dollars? Yes, ma'am. Uh, for next year, the Danes have appropriated about $100 million for their defense. Uh, and what program. percentage is that of their total government budget? That's about 16%. Are they aware that we are spending a much higher percentage? Yes, yes, indeed they are. And uh, I think, however, that it should be pointed out that we Americans have always recognized the principle that a man who earns $1,000 a year can't pay the same amount of income tax as a man who earns $5,000 a year. But that uh, is on a percentage basis. Canada, for instance, pays about 49% into yes, the defense program. But Canada has lots of raw materials, and Denmark is a country with no raw materials. Denmark has no economy save its It's agriculture. agricultural. Uh -huh. That's its total economy. And even for its agriculture, it has to import feedstuffs. Well, this leaves the small nation in a very uh, dependent role in this family of nations, this Atlantic family, doesn't it? It is a difficult position for the small nations. Mm -hmm. Do you have any constructive criticism to offer of, our, of the present NATO effort? Is there anything that you think we could do that better than we are now doing? Yes, indeed. I think that uh, we can always do better than we're doing. And I think that we all need to have a greater sense of urgency. I think that uh, for all of us, Americans too, that we probably will have to sacrifice much more than we have. Uh, your message is that, that we in America are not doing enough then? Well, that's very difficult to say. I can only say that I feel that there are many people here that don't feel that the matter is really so terribly urgent. <laughs> are we too rich? Well, uh, I don't think we're too rich, but we are terribly wealthy. <laughs> well, if I were to sum up then what uh, your message tonight, 
I believe that it's uh, one of the most hopeful ones that we've had. In effect, you believe that while we still have a long way to go, that uh, we are definitely making progress oh, yes, uh, indeed. in Western Europe. I think great progress has been made just during the two years that I've been there. Well, thank you so very much, Madam Ambassador, for being with us tonight. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Donald I. Rogers and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Eugenie Anderson, United States Ambassador to Denmark. Christmas shoppers passing through Herald Square in New York hear the chiming of bells, and many eyes are drawn to Minerva and the bell ringers, Stuff and Guff. The inspiration for this beautiful monument came from the clock of the 14th century, a clock without dial or hands, just these mechanical men called jacks to strike the bell to announce the hour. From these bell ringers to the modern Longines watch, covers 400 years in the development of the science of timekeeping. The first Longines watch, made in 1866, created to the ideal that forever the name Longines would be placed on only the finest watches that mechanical skill could produce. How well successive generations of watchmakers have followed this ideal is reflected by the public honors which Longines watches have won. Ten World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories. Right now, Longines jewelers throughout the country are showing the new Longines Christmas watches for 1951, which reflect in every detail of performance and beauty the perfection which Longines watches have attained. It's a fair statement that throughout the world no other name on a Christmas watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you again that the Longines Chronoscope is brought to you three times weekly, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So won't you join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for The Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.